Hello and welcome to this first tutorial in a series of tutorials on the project panel in Adobe Premiere Pro. There's an awful lot you can do with the project panel. That's why there's going to be a series of tutorials on the project panel, just because there's so much to cover. You might not think so at first glance, but actually there's an awful lot in there. Now the first thing, when you've opened a project, all I've done here is I've imported some clips. I've given all the clips an in point and an out point um, and uh, nothing more. That's all I've done at the moment. Now, there are my clips. They're in alphabetical order, which is the way that the project panel generally arranges them. We'll see there's other options in a minute, but they're in alphabetical order. But what you don't really realize, unless you start to pull out the side here, is just how much information there is in the project panel. All the metadata, that's the data that was created with the clip itself, is actually inside the project panel. So I can find things, not just based on their name, but say based on the tape name that they were created from or based on the duration of the clip, the in point or the out point. So what we've got here, we've got the frame rate, media start, media finish. Now that's based actually on the tape that it originally came from. And there is the duration. And you can see that there is actually an in point and an out point telling me how long the actual clip itself is and lots of other information, including things such as whether it was a good take or not. Now, let's just say that the information that's most important to you isn't the label color and the frame rate, that they aren't really important. What's important to you is how long the clips are once you've chosen in and out points, which would be under video duration just here, and also whether they're good takes or not. Some of these might be ticked, some of them might not be ticked, and you want to know whether they're good or not. Well, you can take that panel, good, click, hold, and drag it right the way along to before label, and let go, and there's good. And if we go to video duration, which is telling me the length of the clip based on the in and out points that I have set, I can click and drag and drop that, say, before good. And now when I go back and sort of minimize my project panel somewhat and bring it back to normal, here are the clips and here is the actual duration that I have selected. So here we can see there's my in and my out point. The total duration here is 9.16 seconds. And there it is in my project panel and the, and the fact that it's a good take. It's all there and available for you to play around with, organize as suits you best in the project panel. Right, so that's how we can organize our footage. But also there are different ways of viewing the footage. And these two icons down here show us. The first one that we have it on at the moment is the list view, which is showing them all in alphabetical order. So we've got three numbers starting all the way down to W for waves. However, we have another icon down here, which is called the icon view. Let's click on the icon view. And let's just increase our project panel a bit so that we can see all the bits and pieces. So there are the clips. What I can do is I can start to move these around to put them in the order that I want them to go into my project. Now, I think waves I actually want to finish with. Um, and I think soft focus C I might start with. Um, and the surf over the rocks, uh, I don't want near 3D C. It's similar, but I do want it. Uh, after the boats in the harbour. Anyway, you can organise them however you want to organise them. And then we can start looking at some really good options. However, if I go back, if we look at this, we start with soft focus C and finish with, with uh, boats in harbour and waves on beach. If I go back to my list view, it's still in alphabetical order, which is no good for us. But if we go back to this storyboard view, if you like, organising the clips in the way that you want to use them, we can start to take advantage of some of the options in the panel menu. Now the panel menu is found up here, these lines with the little down arrow. Click on that and we've got some very interesting options. But one of the ones I wanted to show you first of all is this view. Now we've looked at list and icon, but there's also one that says preview area. Now this area up here is your preview area, if I click away for a moment. If I click on 3DC and I push play, there is my preview area and it's previewing the bit of footage for us. But I don't always want that showing because actually that can get in the way. I already look at these, say, in the source panel, and I don't really want to see these and, and use more space. So I can simply turn those off by going to View, Preview Area, there it's gone. And that's now taking up less real estate on my computer. However, if you want it on, there is one option in there that is quite valuable. If I go View to Preview Area. Let's say we've got this Boat into Harbour clip. In actual fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to go down to Thumbnails and I'm going to make these large so you can get a better view of them on your screen. There, you can make them nice and large so you can see how they look. And let's just move that out so we can see them all. There we go. Now, there is the boat into harbour. At the moment, it's a little bit difficult to see. Now, if I scrub through this up in the preview area, say, so I've got something a lot clearer that shows the castle in the background and the boat, 
just say there, I've got this little button here that says poster frame. Now, at the moment, you can see that the poster frame is the first frame of the clip. But if I click this poster frame, it updates it so I can see a much more clear view and I know what that piece of footage is all about. Right, so for now, I'm going to leave that at large view, but I'm going to turn off the preview area because I don't really want the preview area. And there I've got my items. Now, I've organized these in a sequence that suits me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first one, hold the shift key and select the last one, and then I'm going to go back to my panel menu, and this option, Automate to Sequence, is now open. Click on Automate to Sequence, and it gives me some options. The options are, I can put them to my project in the sort order, which is actually what I have at the moment. I've sorted them into the right order. However, I could, if I wanted, have them in selection order. So rather than selecting the first and the last and doing it that way, I could have selected one and two and three and four and five and six. Then it would put them to the timeline in the selection order. However, I'm happy with the sort order. I've used it as a storyboard. I'm happy with the order they've gone. Um, and they're going to go in sequentially. They can use overlay edits, the clip overlay. It's 25 frames. Now the default transition is going to be a dissolve, a cross dissolve. It says it's 25 frames because my system is PAL, Phase Alternating Line European, it's 25 frames. If you're using NTSC or a different one, you can change that to say 30 frames. Or if you want, you can actually do it in seconds if that's easier for you. Then I click OK and there they all are in my timeline and I can actually zoom in. And in exactly the order, Soft Focus C, Soft Focus C, 3D C, exactly the order that I selected, they've all been put straight to my timeline, all of them have got transitions between them, it's happened without any effort whatsoever, really easy to do. Now there's a couple of other things I want to show you, I'm just going to go back to my list view, and I want to show you the search options, now there's not a lot in here so it, it's quite easy to demonstrate, there are two search options, one is up here which is simple search, and there's a more complex search option down here. Now if your project panel was filled with lots and lots of different footage and you needed to find it, you can do a simple search and see if that would do it. So if I do 3DC, so 3D, it turns around and said actually there's one clip with 3D, click on that, there it is. And then make sure you hit this little X button once you've finished doing your search, you've selected the clip that you want, make sure that you hit this X button or else you won't be able to see any of the other clips. There we go, and uh, it's, the, the order's gone back to front. I can just click Name, and it'll do it from 3 all the way down to W. So that's how I can do a quick search. However, there is a much more um, detailed search option down here. If you click that button there, you'll find that what you can do is you can search by name, but all the other bits and pieces that are in our metadata. So I could, for instance, search by tape name, and I can do uh, the tape name SH1, and I could say boat and then I can actually do a search to find there you go that particular one there done is boat and if I actually scroll across we'll see that the tape name is SH1 so I can use a much more detailed search option with this icon down here giving me all these options to search for all the metadata that is available and also whether it contains, it starts with, it ends with an exact match. So if you know the name of your footage, um, but you don't know all of it, you could turn around and say, well, I know it starts with surf, S-U-R-F. Maybe I know that it's in, its tape name is SH1. And I can click O, find, done. There's the piece of footage, starts with surf, tape name was SH1 and we're done. So that's how I can organize my footage in my panel, how I can actually do a storyboard version and I can change the sizes of these previews by using the panel menu so I can make my thumbnails small, I can make my thumbnails medium which is how it comes as standard or large as you've seen, how I can also select clips by all sorts of different routes either individually holding the control key so that they're out of order and once they're selected, if I go to Automate to Sequence, I can then go around by Selection Order and I'll get a completely different answer. Well, that's the first of these tutorials on the project panel. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be looking at the new items icon and all the new items that you can create that are really valuable for your project, as well as looking at some of the templates that are available just to spice up what you're doing. My name's Andrew Davis. 
and I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Thank you.